Greetings everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I want to show off a build for the Eclipse Intel Battle Cruiser, and it's not going to be like a full review of the ship or anything formal like that. It came out in 2014 so I would be quite late to the party if that was my intention, but I always thought it was kind of a neat looking ship. I never got the big Delta expansion pack and for a long time I thought I might so I never wanted to break it by getting any of the ships that were inside, but I finally decided eh, let me go ahead and pick this one up. I did a video recently if you didn't see it where I talked about 10 ships I thought really benefit from the new Vanguard specialist trait and this is one of the ships on that list. I didn't own all the ships on that list but of the ones I don't have this is the one that caught my eye the most and I wanted to give it a try with Surgical Strikes 3 and since I had a couple of ship coupons laying around one of which from the free anniversary giveaway they did I decided to go ahead and pick it up and I wanted to show you what I did with it because I think it has a really strong Intel theme and I really leaned into that quite a bit. So if we look at the station here I've used the maximum number of Intel powers possible that commander engineering Intel seat we have surgical strikes rank 3 we've got override subsystem safeties 3 for the extra weapon power and then I went for a full stealth build with Exodus act probat I've tried to make sure that everything on the build is not gambling exclusive so it may have had gambling involved at some point or another but it's either in a mud bundle now or you can be gotten through an event campaign reward in one way or another or something like that so I do have Exodus act to probe out on here for sort of permanent combat stealth. We have two uh, copies of Intel Team. Then for the Science Intel seat, I went with Viral Impulse Burst and Electromagnetic Pulse Probe for the cooldown reduction for consoles with unconventional systems. For the Ensign Universal, I put Jam Targeting Sensors on there because it triggers Exodus and it's a control ability. For the Lieutenant Commander Engineering, we've got Emergency Power to Engines, Emergency Power to Weapons 3, and Boarding Party for a bit of fun because I do have the trait, Improvised Boarding Party. For the tactical seat, I have Beta 2, Chemo 2, and TAC Team 1. For the actual ship loadout itself, we got some advanced beam arrays, the Terran Task Force, and the Trilithium Omni. We've got a Lorca in the Tier 6X upgrade. This is the fleet version, so it has four tactical slots. And we got four locators on here for the crit chance. For our active clickies, we've got Domino, DPRM, and the Agony Redistributor. For passive consoles, we've got the reinforced armaments to give the haste bonus with the Trilithium. Lithium Omni. We've got Bio Neural for hull capacity, control, and crit severity. Ultimate for the crit chance and accuracy. And Tachyokinetic for control, flight turn rate, crit chance, and crit severity. In terms of traits, we got the usual suspects. We got unconventional systems, adaptive offense, all that kind of stuff. Big ones on here though are Boimler for the cooldown reduction, improvised boarding party for the memes, fragment of AI tech for the control expertise and energy weapon damage. Basically, the only thing the control expertise is doing on this ship is feeding into this particular trait for the cat one damage and then in order to make the exodus build work we have fresh from R, R. plus we have intelligent agent attache then for the starship traits we have emergency weapon cycle for the haste vanguard specialist to keep the surgical strikes up we got Strike from Shadows, which is thematic and gives us crit chance and bonus damage. Calm Before the Storm for Firing Cycle Haste. Heart of Soul for Firing Cycle Haste and bonus damage because I'm using phasers. And of course, Exodus because the build wouldn't work without it. We have an endeavor today to destroy some Borg ships and to complete Borg TFOs. So let's go do an ISA and I'll see you there in a moment. All right, we're here in the ISA. There's only a few seconds left, so let's go kick some butt. Okay, and we're here with the parse, and it looks like we did about 200k, which is almost exactly the same as we did with the Legendary Scimitar, which a lot of people would probably consider a better ship, including myself. So when you consider that this had a 4-4 weapon layout with beam arrays, and that the Legendary Scimitar had a 5-3 with cannons, and it had pets and everything, and we even put a few silly funsy things on this build, I would say this is actually a better result, even though it's a few K short of what we got the last time. And uh, yeah, overall pretty well. Just a random Q ISA, nothing too serious here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the DPS chart. And uh, we started off really strong and then died down a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the individual player combat report. So it looks like the beams did about uh, 175k of the 200, pretty much all of it. If we take a look at the pets here, that nanite transformer, uh, that 12k came from the uh, Agony Redistributor console. So it's a pretty good console. There's a reason why people use it. But yeah, that was the uh, result there. And uh, it's a very, very capable ship. I know a lot of people probably had it written off for a very long time time including myself 
But if you get Vanguard Specialist or you have it and you have this ship, you haven't taken it out for a while or it's something maybe you were interested in, I would say this has been elevated quite significantly to the point that it is no longer a bargain basement ship. It is now a pretty decent ship and it's one that's worth considering, especially if you like the appearance or the theme or any of that kind of stuff. So uh, thank you very much for joining me. Special thank you to my channel members. As always, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.